I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. Senator John Barrasso made remarks on the Senate floor Wednesday to discuss what he described as, quote, America's inflation crisis. The rate of inflation in April slowed for the first time in eight months, but experts still aren't sure how long it will take for prices to return to normal levels. Let's listen in for more from the Wyoming Republican. Mr. President. Senator from Wyoming. Thank you, Mr. President. I ask unanimous consent that the quorum call be initiated. Without objection. Mr. President, I come to the floor today to talk about America's inflation crisis. And it is a crisis. Today, Americans woke up to the basically two gut punches. One that uh, found the gas prices the highest they've ever been, ever, in the history of this country. And the second, that the inflation number is still incredibly high and actually higher than was anticipated by the uh, government so-called specialists. Well, last week, the senior senator from Illinois came to this floor, and he said Republicans want the midterm elections to be about inflation and the border. I think the senator intended his comments to be a criticism of Republicans, but I would point out to the senator from Illinois, that's exactly what the American people say this election ought to be about, inflation and the border. Not Republicans who are making that the election issue for 2022. No, it's what the American people say they want to vote on. Frankly, it's also the Democrats because they created both of these crises. So this is going to be an up or down vote on how well the Democrats have done with the border and with our economy and the inflation that is crushing so many families at home all across the country. Nobody forced the Democrats to vote to cram a $2 trillion spending bill through Congress last March. Oh, no. Party line vote. The Democrats in this body, Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats in the House, and Joe Biden only two months into his presidency. Democrats say, oh, no, no, it was coronavirus. That's what they said it was for. But when you take a look at that bill, only one out of every $11 actually went for medical care. The rest went to a big Democrat wish list. It includes government checks to illegal immigrants. These are criminals behind bars receive checks from the government in the name of coronavirus relief. Nobody forced the Democrats to open the southern border. So the crisis that we have of inflation and the crisis that we have in the border are both crises of choice by the Democrats. Now, here we are 15 months into the Democrats' administration. The number one issue in America today is inflation. 40-year high inflation numbers. Nine out of 10 Americans, and Mr. President, I would just point out, nine out of 10 Americans hardly ever agree on anything. Nine out of 10 Americans are concerned and upset about inflation. And it's really not hard to see why. This week, just like last week, terrible economic news for working families. Gas prices again at an all-time high. The price of a gallon of gasoline today is $2 higher for each and every gallon when people go to fill up than the day Joe Biden became president. This morning, a 40-year, a, a new all-time high. Yesterday, an all-time high. Higher yet this morning for gasoline. Inflation, a 40-year high. But prices are going up much faster than wages. In fact, this gap between prices and wages continues to grow. People are falling further and further behind. The average family is poorer today than they were the day Joe Biden took office in terms of their ability to buy goods and services in our economy from the dollars they have in their pockets. And these are even for people that have gotten raises. People can't afford necessities like baby formula if they can find baby formula. Hard time finding that all across the country. It finally made the national news last night, but I've been hearing about it in Wyoming now for a number of weeks. Credit card debt is also near an all-time high. Why? Because people in the Biden economy are having to borrow more and more money just to get by. And the interest rates on these credit cards is also at an all-time high. So people are being punished again and again and again in so many ways that they turn in the Biden economy. People are paying more and more and getting less and less, and people are not happy. 
People have been pushed to the breaking point, and they are angry, and they're angry at the Democrats who put us as a nation in this mess. Americans haven't been this pessimistic about the economy since the Great Recession. And when they look in Washington, D.C., they see a Senate with Chuck Schumer claiming to be in charge of a majority in the Senate. They look at Nancy Pelosi claiming to be in charge of the House, and Joe Biden in the White House saying he's in charge there. And yet, the President spoke yesterday and spoke today. And for the people in charge, he wants no responsibility for what's happening in this country with this economy. Said it yesterday, said it again today. He was full of blame, full of excuses, full of not telling the truth to the American people. Blame somebody else. Look, in just 30 minutes in a speech, Joe Biden blamed. Let me go through this whole list of the folks he blamed in just 30 minutes. He blamed coronavirus. He blamed Russia. He blamed meatpacking. He blamed shipping. He blamed Republicans. He blamed oil companies. He blamed everybody but himself. At the same time, he actually admitted in the speech that Democrats are in power. Apparently, they don't have power to do anything other than blame other people. He admitted that Democrats control the White House and the House and the Senate. We do not have a Harry Truman moment here who said the buck stops here. Oh, no, no. Joe Biden keeps trying to pass the buck. He's been finger pointing at Republicans. And in doing so, he earned three Pinocchios from the Washington Post. Those are the people that look into this and say, is the president really telling the truth? No, no, no. Three Pinocchios. Yet Joe Biden, after receiving that grade, the failing grade from the Washington Post, he repeated the same lie yesterday, finger pointing again and again. He's telling people that he cut spending. He hasn't. In fact, Joe Biden has been the most recklessly economic president in the history of this country. Reckless. The American people remember that Joe Biden took $2 trillion on the credit card with a bill that he had passed by the House and the Senate and signed in March. He was gleeful at the signing ceremony. He signed the single most expensive spending bill in the history of the country. Inflation started soon thereafter. The crisis mounted month after month after he had signed the bill. Oh, you remember when the president said, oh, it's transitory, forget about it, don't look over there, go away quickly. Month after month after month, the president dismissed it ignored it, denied it. The American people remember that just six months later, Joe Biden tried to pass another massive spending bill. Joe Biden has never cut a dime of spending in his life, but he has added trillions of dollars to our debt. What did it get us? The worst inflation in 40 years and a stagnant economy. There's still a million fewer Americans working today than there were before the pandemic struck. Under Joe Biden, we've created a lot fewer jobs than the economists expected. The economists have gotten it wrong again and again. They got it wrong in terms of how many jobs they expected to be made, and they got it wrong today when they thought what the inflation rate would be. And in both cases, their projections were more optimistic than the actual results turned out to be. Last year, we projected we, — we created fewer jobs in America than were projected without the spending bill. And he said the spending bill was going to get us more jobs. Economists' projections on an economy just keep going lower and lower and lower. Now the experts are predicting a recession. A recession is when the economy shrinks for six months. We're already halfway there. In the first three months of this year, the economy did shrink. Why? Well, because of inflation. As former Obama advisor, economic advisor, Austin Goolsby said on Friday, it's an awful situation. Well, yes, it is. High inflation is going to lead to higher interest rates, which will slow down our economy even more. Last week, the Federal Reserve issued the biggest hike in interest rates in 22 years. 
The Fed also indicated it is just the beginning. We're going to have more rate hikes coming. This will slow down the economy even further. And on top of all this, this may be too little too late by an administration that is very slow on the trigger. The damage of inflation has been done. The average American family today is paying $100 a week more just to buy the same things that they bought last year. That's $5,200 a year more this year than last year because of the way Joe Biden has mishandled and mismanaged our American economy. Prices are going up. Interest rates are going up. The economy is slowing down. And what's Joe Biden going to do? Regrettably, he is trying to double down. And so to the senior senator from Illinois, the midterm elections, as you said, will be about inflation and will be about the crisis and the chaos at the southern border, whether the senator likes it or not. The American people are suffering. They feel stuck. They feel stressed. They feel squeezed. They are begging and pleading with Democrats in Washington, stop the reckless spending, unleash American energy. We have plenty of it in the ground. Let us get it out and bring this Democrat inflation nightmare to an end. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor. Suggest the absence of a quorum.